All right, welcome back. Now, still the Good Morning Nigeria show, and I believe so. Now, enjoy that one uh, for Football Republic, where they give the updates on things where they happen for the football scene. We're going to do that one uh, from time to time, and I'm going to enjoy all the football experts on talking all the matters with the Shelly for that side, too. Well, I promise when I say we get better interviews via Skype, and yes, we finished a very uh, interesting one earlier with uh, a life coach, and we had to understand the difference between a life coach and a mentor. And we're moving on to another exceptional interview because, uh, trust me, people who believe say, ah, I ain't be this, I ain't be this. Yes, we're talking to Kelvin Budge. Uh, he's a producer, a songwriter, a superstar artist, all together. Uh, Kelvin Budge, welcome to the Good Morning Ninja Show. How are you feeling today? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm glad, I'm happy to be here. I like that. I like the fact that you are happy to be here. Well, the conversation is, uh, we always ask our guests here, yeah? I always ask my guests how they're doing, knowing that there's a pandemic, coronavirus, everything has changed, yep. the world was hit unexpectedly. So I like to ask honestly, are you really good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Can't, can't complain. Best to be a lot of, you know, there's a lot happening in the world. So the most grateful thing you can Thankful to God for right now. The fact that we're all alive, you hmm. know, healthy. I like that. Being alive and healthy. So, uh, for those who don't know, where, what part of the world are you in right now? I'm, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Right Atlanta, now. okay. So you're in, you're in America currently. So how is the condition, uh, the, the coronavirus uh, condition over where you are right now? What is it like? You know, it's... Uh, in America, everybody knows numbers out here are great, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, every, there's a lot of confusion. Some people now feel like there's a lot of politics behind yeah. all of it going on, you know, but um, it's it's serious. There are people dying from coronavirus. Well, as Niger, you know, mm. no, as, we always feel like we have time to you feel me? Yeah. When you, where we're coming from. All those days when we to the five percent. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so at the end of the day, we just have to thankful God and MS. But it is serious and people are dying in hmm. crazy numbers, right? You know. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so Kevin Budge, uh, a lot of people don't know say you change your name from Lelo to Kevin Budge. And let's yeah. do a, a bit of backtracking, right? We're going to go back a bit in time and get to play a video that you actually did when you were Lelo. And when we come back, we're going to discuss why the change of name. But let us watch this video and uh, get so that people get to understand why we're doing this. To Lelo. Yes. Uh, wow. Okay, so that was a jam by Lelo, right? And now we are speaking to Kevin Budge. Now, don't be confused. They are the same person. But Kevin Budge would like to know why the change of name and brand from Lelo to Kevin Budge. Now, we know that you are a producer also. You're a producer yeah. and you're an artist. Now, yeah. uh, you're, you're a songwriter. So, is it that yeah. Lelo is the producer and Kevin Budge is the artist? Or lead us through the idea. What happened? Okay, so pretty much as Lelo, I was strictly more of a producer. Yeah. You know? And, and at a time, I, I used to do a lot of hip hop work. And um, I also serviced independent artists in, in America while I was still in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So at some point, I felt like I needed to move, you know? So I moved out, so I came out here to Atlanta, and um, I'm doing my thing, and I'm seeing that there's a high demand for Afro beats too mm -hmm. out here. And, and it became necessary at a point that I had to come in as just not a writer, but as an artist producer. Think more like, so, a Timberland mm -hmm. or a Swiss Beats mm -hmm. or Pharrell. These are all platinum selling producers, yeah. but they also yeah. make music too as artists. Yeah. And yeah. that being said, if I was to move forward, the name Lalo had been copyrighted out here. Mm. And in America, there's, there's, there's so much of a structure here. The structure here is just, it's unbelievable. And if I was to make a lot of money, mm -hmm. I needed to have a, a name that didn't have any issues 
or anything. The name you need and to use. I, I started a, yes, I started a room with a, a record label A and R, right? Um, and he said to me, "You're worried about changing your name because of the people that already know you as Dodo, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? The world is a bigger place. There are more people." that don't know, Nigeria is one country, Africa is one continent. Mm -hmm. There are more people that don't know Lelo than the people that know Lelo right now. Yeah. So I try to conquer the world on the main I'm like, change your name. Change your name. Hmm. The people that, that know you already will still gravitate towards you regardless. So I just went by my first name and an application of my last name. I just called myself Kelvin Budge. Kelvin Budge. And Kelvin. life has been beautiful ever since. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Hmm. Now, um, the reason why I decided to ask that question is because uh, we've seen the name change situation cause a lot mm -hmm. of issues for some artists back here in Nigeria. You know, it happens. Because everybody's used yeah. to you as this name, and you now say, oh, today I'm going to change my name, and you come out with a different name, and you realize that you lose a bit of, or a huge chunk of your fan base, because they feel yeah. they don't know you anymore. You understand? So wasn't that a bit of fear for you, seeing the fact that, okay, back home in Nigeria, they know you as Lelo, you're a super producer, and now you come out as Kevin Budge, wouldn't you be extra work for you to let people know that, okay, I'm still the same guy, still the same creative person, but I'm just coming with a different name. And were you not scared that you're going to lose a chunk of your fan base, you know, being the fact that you're changing your name in Nigeria, per se? Even, even till date, the people that go, wait, you budge, wait, you're Lilo. Mm. You know? Yeah. But, but this is me, I'm a, I'm a, naturally, I'm the type that loves to be challenged. I don't, I don't like to relish in what I've done in the past. Hmm. You understand? Yeah. And and I feel like if I work hard enough, it almost felt like I'm starting all over again. Yeah. But it's you like know, a new process. I feel like yeah. If I'm to be honest, it felt like I was starting all over again. And and some people be talking about Lelo right in front of me, not knowing I'm the Lelo. Yeah, the Lelo guy. they're talking about. <laughs> You know, say, ah, that little guy. Ah! <laughs> yeah. You feel me? I just let it. I just, I'm, I'm, I just let them like, you know, relish with that. Yeah. And yeah. You know, to a point where, when I've worked hard enough, because I'm, I'm, I'm a very hard person, and I'm, I'm going to get there. Hmm. Nothing is stopping me. When I get to that point, where it is obviously obvious that this guy is taken over and this is not just nigeria africa mm -hmm. internationally here because mm -hmm. i'm a man on a mission you know and when it gets to that point everybody will just naturally it uh, it's like a puzzle they'll all connect wow okay this mm. guy you know that's later that's good what put what put in is work put in i put in that work as a person you know it will all just come together with time Hmm. So now, I, I would like to ask, you are, you're a producer and you are very good at that, and now you're an artist, and you know, you're so good at that, so what led mm -hmm. you into being, into deciding that, okay, I want to push the, the, the artist part of me, because sometimes they say that the story begins with the artist, right, or a young guy who likes to write songs, he starts mm -hmm. to write songs, he realizes that for him to produce a song is expensive, he gets himself yeah. a laptop, starts to learn how to produce, to produce his own yeah. songs. Then he gets to produce for yeah. other people, and he becomes big as a producer, and remembers that, okay, mm -hmm. it's time for me to go back to my writing of music and push my music side. Was that your story? Oh, no, my, my own story was more so a production first, first love. Um, that's it, like, back from way back, Production, production, and then I came to America. Obviously, obviously, still production, mm -hmm. and then I'm right, and then I'm trying to. I'm in the studio with like a lot of big names, say like Fetty Wap, you know. And yeah. when I came out, I was in the studio, just here, working with as much people, and I find myself constantly in a position where I'm in the studio with a big name artist. Okay. I'm trying to. Yeah. 
trying to say, oh, yo, have you heard about this guy? He's this in Afro, in the Afro B world. I'm like on my, on the studio computer, I have like everybody loaded from the band, mm -hmm. Whiskey, mm -hmm. you know, just, and I'm trying to sell these other guys. And they, they're not trying to like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, because obviously they're not there in the studio. Yeah. So it was more so you are here. Do the verse. Do it for yeah, me. Yeah, so like, we can yeah. feel it firsthand. Yeah, since you're here. So we can feel it firsthand. And, and that constantly kept being the situation. I'm like, you know what? I might as well just, I'm not trying to, so I'm trying to do a, a this, these are big name artists that if you try to hit them up, they'll charge you 50, 60, $100,000 for a film. For a film, yeah. But their studio with me, and we're making records, we're making five, six records in a day. Hmm. You understand? Yeah. And yeah. then if I say, yeah. oh, this guy can do it, it's like, oh, they still got to pay. But I'm sitting in there and I have access to it. So you get to a point, you start to think, I have access to stuff that's mm -hmm. worth mm -hmm. 50, 60, 100,000 dollars. Why don't I make good use of these opportunities, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was more so my consideration. All right, makes sense. Right. I like that. I like that. So uh, we're, we're going to play a video uh, of Kevin Budge right now, so that people can yeah. get to see uh, what Kevin Budge is up to and how you've evolved from Lelo to Kevin Budge. Let's check out this video. When we come back, we're still talking. Kevin Budge, and that is that's an amazing song. I like the vibe. No good, they look my. Uh, now we see that a lot, a lot has changed from Lelo to Kevin Budge, and even the style of, you know, the music now, you know, it's more Afrobeat, you know, that kind of flow. So just tell us, why did you decide to give Kevin Budge this, uh, this style? Why was it uh, Afrobeat? Why did you decide to pick Afrobeat as the kind of music you push out? Okay, so um, I just put out a, an album project titled Man on a Mission, mm -hmm. and it's a perfectly crafted blend of Afrobeat and hip hop. Hmm. Yes, but um, by true nature, I'm I'm Nigerian. African. Yeah. But the lead single as an Afrobeat. Hmm. But if you look at the whole project, it's a 14 track album project, and I have artists like Gucci Mane on it. Hmm. I have um, uh, I have Lil Mo, Young Mo. He's a hip hop artist signed on the Gucci name too. Okay. Uh, I have Kale. Kale is an American hip hop artist, but he's originally Nigerian. And then I have Stevie Lil Cash, mm -hmm. right from the. So yeah. if you look at the dynamics of the album, it's, it's a mixture of Afro beats and hip hop. Mm. Yeah, so I'm more, I wouldn't say I'm totally Afro beat. Okay. A fine blend of Afrobeats and hip hop, but the Afro records are very, very much Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. and, and put it in consideration, I'm a producer, so I can literally make whatever kind of music I want. That comes All to I your head, to, yeah. You just, you keyboard, just put it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, so with the Afro records, there's a way the international community understands Afro. Yeah. It has to be like, you know, like the lot type. Yeah. That's why he's turn a boy, a whiskey, a big like they are doing well out here because that sound is what res that, that type of sound is what resonates with them. Hmm. And when I when I when I was putting the album together, I, I had to put into consideration that a lot of the people that follow me are also Americans or Australians or Canadians mm -hmm. that you know that are, are not really in touch of with what's really happening in Lagos. Yeah. In the capital, like what you understand. So yeah. my Afrobe sounds, I try to make it in such a way that it's very authentic, original, mm -hmm. but foreign guy that loves Kelvin Budge can understand it, mm -hmm. you know? 
Makes sense. Quite interesting. I like I like the sound. We like the vibe. When we started to play it, everybody was already ready. We're ready to turn up. But we're like, no, 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 no. Today's Monday. We need to get serious. But <laughs> it was quite it's quite an amazing yeah. sound. So before we wrap this up, we just like to know um <laughs> what uh should people expect from Kevin Budge? You know, aside this amazing video we just saw, is there anything else we should be expecting? You said the album is out. So tell us, you know, how they can uh, get it and other things like that. Yeah, the album is titled Man on a Mission. Okay. Um, it's a beautiful piece of work. Um, if you listen to it, you would agree. So, you totally agree with me. You mm. know, I don't want to overhype it. I want you guys to go check out the album by yeah. yourself. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful piece of work. There's something for everybody in there, mm. you know? I, and um, I'm dropping a video, animated video, with uh, the song with Gucci Mane in a few days. Mm. Um, there's a song, Kangaroo, there produced by Spells, because I work with Spells and Big Dre, the only Afrobeat artists, producers yeah. that I work with, you know, just to give me a little flavor. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you, uh, I was yeah. working with American producers, Zaytoven, you know, and every other record was produced by me. Um, so go listen to the album. Uh, I have a, I have a, a, a uh, an EP project coming out very soon before okay. the end of the year. Okay. It's pretty much a remake of classical Afrobeat song mm -hmm. just brought to life to modern day. And uh, just, yeah, follow me on Instagram yeah. at I Kelvin Bud and just, you know, check me out. Like, I got a lot coming. You just see for yourself. I like that. I like that. Thank you very much, Kelvin Budge, for this conversation. I believe that to all your fans out there, they will be waiting eagerly for these yeah. uh, projects that you said are coming. And yeah, so check out the album and get a lot of Kelvin Budge. Let's let's get to feel the experience of Kelvin Budge one more time. Thank you very much, Kelvin Budge, for talking to us. And uh, we'll definitely get to hear from you sometime soon. All right? Okay, uh, guys, we just finished an interesting interview with Kevin Budge. Let's check out this music video again for those of you who missed it the first time. And uh, when we come back, we're going straight into other matters on the Good Morning Ninja show.